So what is up guys, welcome back to another episode, breakdown, post review, discussion, live thingy my Bobby, we do every single week after Gotham. Uh, this is my review slash live discussion breakdown of episode 6 of season 4, uh, entitled Hog Day Afternoon. And this featured Professor Pig, awesome episode, and I have to say, honestly, uh, this was my favourite episode of the season so far. Out of all 6 episodes, this was my the one, just like what I said because of uh, in previous, well, my previous trailer breakdown, I was just so excited for the Jim and Harvey time we'd be getting this episode. Um, obviously, Professor Pig probably being the main reason, um, and the fact, you know, I knew that this would be setting up a storyline for several episodes to come. So Riddler actually wants Lee to help him, and we all knew that was going to happen at the end of last episode when we got that dramatic turn from Lee, and it was just like, yeah, we, Lee, we knew you were coming. Um, but yeah, uh, it was kind of obvious, but I'm really happy that Lee uh, said to Riddler, and this is what I was saying uh, from a trailer breakdown last week, you know, you, you need a, you know, a doctor to help you, um, you know, not, I'm not a neuroscience neuro or neurologist or whatever she said. I'm glad they pointed that out because that's exactly what I said uh, in my trailer breakdown. I was like, but Lee Tompkins, unless she's done neurology or whatever it's called, uh, she won't be able to help him too much, but they're still kind of going with that storyline. She's going to try and do everything in her power uh, at, at, at towards the end of the episode. She kind of agreed because we learned that she's actually set up Dr. Lee's, uh, you know, clinic. And I, I actually really, it kind of turns things around for me when we found out that Dr. Lee Tompkins is actually set up her own clinic. It kind of made her character a bit less glum and obviously, you know, depressing, because that's what I thought they were going with the vibes of this season. I thought it was just going to be a whole episode with Leeds being like, oh, you know, I'm just in this fight club, not really much of a storyline for me. But no, she's actually set up a little uh, clinic that she's good at trying to help the, the people of Gotham with. And that actually really brought a lot of faith back to her character for me. I believe, if I remember correctly, in the comics, or whether it's the animated series or something, she, you know, she ha she helps out people in her clinic, and even Batman one day, so I was very happy to see that she was doing that in this episode, and it kind of turned her character from this depressing, dark person into this, you know, with not really much of a story and why the writer's doing this kind of thing, to like, oh, we, I get it, she's been through a lot of stuff, she's gone a bit dark, but she's still kind of trying to be this underdog doctor and help people out and this is actually probably starting you know the the cr clinic career doctor path that she'll be going throughout till batman is around so i'm really happy they did that i thought it's really cool and it as i said brought a lot of um you know brought a lot of faith in her character back for me and yeah chrono kid said she had a clinic in the animated series so yeah i did i knew that clinic was a thing um that I was happy about because I knew it was a thing out there. Penguin. Penguin this episode. I'll get onto Grundy and stuff a bit later. I kind of felt a little bit sorry for him at the beginning because I knew we all know he's getting manipulated right by Sophia Falco and Sophia's whole point in Gotham at the minute is just to completely take the city back from Penguin. But as we know, you know, Penguin said, I believe at towards the beginning of the episode, you know, this isn't you know, easy for me, for me, he even used the words, you know, a real friend, and, and you, you see that look in Penguin, you get to see the real core of Oswald, and, you know, it, it kind of made me feel bad, because he, he got completely played this episode, he thought, obviously, Sophia was up to something, and this was all a part of her plan as well, she knew, basically, that she was looking into him, and she set up that orphanage, and that thought, you know, kind of melted Penguin's heart, so now she's even further in now, and he, she's just gonna pull the rug out from under him, and he's gonna come crashing down, and to be honest, I actually kind of like now what they're doing the storyline, I think this is gonna explode when it all comes down, and Sophia, as I said, pulls the rug from underneath Penguin, it is gonna be... It is going to be disastrous when Penguin gets shot down. It's going to be absolutely crazy. It's just going to be mad. And that's another thing in this episode. Victor Zaz, he seems to be like the comedic, you know, uh, tool for the plot at the minute. Obviously, for Penguin, should I say, he's obviously around and helpful for Penguin. But whenever Victor Zaz has something to do, it is really funny. He was actually winding up Penguin a lot in this episode. And I did say I didn't want Victor Zaz to just be the, the comedy factor of... Uh, yeah, well, just his character. Whenever he gets used, it seems to be comedy. But for now, it's okay. I don't want it to be like that forever. I kind of want a bit more cool development for his character. I want to see some scars going on. I want to see more 
actual Victor Zaz storyline rather than him just being a tooth penguin. But the way they are using him at the minute, I have to admit, it is brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. And yeah, I'm even seeing in the comments right now, you know, I love Zaz. Victor Zaz is amazing. We need more Victor. And I completely agree. The whole point of this episode, well, not the whole point, but a big point of this episode was Professor Pig. And Professor Pig is going around taking out the cops on Penguin's payroll and um jim informs penguin and i feel like this is setting up what happens next episode and i will be talking about this in my promo breakdown tomorrow uh but a lot of stuff you know is going to be happening because of this professor pig fallout he's going to be in several episodes from that from here on out just this whole crime licensing thing is going to come to a massive big explosion everything seems to be heating up in gotham for this big ultimate end game i feel like at this end game as well riddler's gonna get his intelligence back it's all gonna come together and maybe this mid-season finale i think potentially maybe penguin will lose his power before then and that's when jerome might come in and he might be using a bit of raw dirty crazy tactics with jerome which would be really cool but let's talk about grundy uh grundy was really cool in this episode i i i, I was pretty worried about him as i said in my previous review um about how he looked but i've recently said a lot of people have asked me what do i think of how he looks and i actually think he's done pretty well i think they brought out a poster recently of grundy and he actually looks pretty good at the end of the day this is tv guys he's not going to be cgi and if they even attempted that it would be very bad because they wouldn't really have the budget to pull him off looking really really good uh but i remember when he, he was getting like hit down in the fight arena or sorry the fight club and i felt kind of sorry for him because he was literally just getting beaten upon and beaten upon but i love absolutely love the dynamic between edward nigma and riddler uh, and riddler and grundy it was just so hilarious when you know grundy was just like you know me fight now or something like that and riddler was just like yes now it was just i don't know the because nigma isn't necessarily extremely smart at the minute and they're both a bit like Obviously, Grundy's the dumber one, but I don't know. I feel like their dynamic between those two was brilliant. And then, obviously, when Grundy uh, returned to fighting uh, this guy, he absolutely pulverized anyone who stood in his way. But at the same time, as I said, I still feel sorry for Grundy, or should I say, you know, underlying Butch, because, you know, we see that he was once Butch Gilzean. And now he's completely being manipulated. I, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, we've we've known this guy for the first three seasons as Butch. And now he's completely getting taken advantage of. And then every time he said to Lee, when Lee was trying to take advantage... Well, not take advantage of him. What am I on about? Was, she was trying to explain to Grundy, saying, you do realize Nygma's completely using you. And when he gets his intelligence back, he's just going to kill you or maybe even worse or something. But he was just like, no you know uh, riddler or nigma is best grundy's best friend so it's just really sad i feel i just feel sorry for uh, grundy but let's talk about professor pig michael severus or severus uh, I'm, i i'm sorry i can't pronounce that name properly but i thought he was brilliant they probably couldn't have casted a better person to play professor pig on the tv show honestly just even from the scene the little scenes we got towards the beginning of the episode where he's putting the makeup on the pig and he was even just doing the little details he is truly truly creepy and th this is very 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 early professor pig he didn't you know at the beginning of the episode he just butchered that guy you know put the uh he just you know completely whacked him over the head he didn't there was no lobotomy there was no uh attempted dollatrons obviously i guess the pig masks are foreshadowing future dollatrons uh but obviously at this stage unless in the next several episodes we will see him attempt to lobotomize somebody uh but initially i kind of get it you know i don't mind that there's no dollatrons immediately he's just trying to correct or in his own words cut out the cancer of gotham he he feels like a kindred spirit to jim uh jim gordon so he, in a very this is what makes people like uh, professor pig really creepy they think they're doing the right thing he thinks you know technically i'm not obviously a psychopath myself but i get where he's coming from obviously he wants to clean up the dirty cops so he's killing them, which is obviously something nobody should do. Um, but he's not one of those villains where he's just doing it for no reason. Almost sometimes with these killers and stuff like that, or these psychopath villains, the fact that they think they're in the right is almost even more scarier. So it's just going to be... I really kind of hope they touch on a lobotomy this season, uh, because since he will be in like six or seven episodes. Uh, so I've got a feeling we might get that. 
Um, but yeah, who knows? But obviously this episode, uh, Professor Pig was great. I love the conversation he had between Jim uh, and then Harvey. I, I got really sad at that Harvey moment. He caught up with Professor Pig talking to Harvey. And as suspected in my trailer breakdown, I did say this. Um, since Harvey basically is, I thought that since he was basically on the in the pockets of Penguin, I didn't actually know he was taking money from Penguin. I just thought since he was allowing all of this to go on and Harvey even explained that to Jim in the first couple of episodes of this season that, you know, he wants to play the long game. I thought that's maybe why Professor Pig was going over after Harvey Bullock. But he, it turns out he was actually taking money from Penguin. And that was such an emotional scene. And so let's start off when Harvey's throat got slit. I knew he wasn't going to die. But honestly, I have to admit, I did. No, yeah, deleted account is saying, Boba teared up about Harvey. I did. I'm not even joking. When his throat got slit and Jim went over to him, I love Harvey Bullock. Often people ask me on these live streams or any Q&A that I do, Who's my favorite character on Gotham? And I often say between Alfred or whatever, I normally pick Harvey Bullock because I love him. I love him so much. Harvey and Jim are great. But anyway, so let's skip forward to that. That made me very upset. But in the hospital bed scene, I thought it was very good acting as well. Jim was getting very emotional because he was just like, look, how long? How long have you been doing this? And even Ben McKenzie was, you know, you know, how do I say it? Quivering or creasing up in his face because he was getting emotional and um donald logue's acting he was crying basically really ashamed in himself really saying look jim you know i've got all these bills and debts to pay i love that this is why i was looking forward to this episode they said i, I ever since i saw the promo i knew that this episode not only because of professor pig being an amazing villain everything like that i was looking forward to the jim and harvey moments and they freaking delivered they delivered and it was amazing so kudos to you gotham this honestly was the best episode yet for me obviously everyone's opinion is different we all know that you don't have to agree with me but this was my favorite one even beyond scarecrow and everything like that it was just it was amazing i loved the character development harvey I didn't necessarily... I, I'm not surprised that he was taking money from Penguin because Harvey, even though Jim has brought out the good in him, because if you think about it, before Jim, Harvey was a bank cop, but he was, you know, one of the cops who would be, if out of anyone, would be, you know, would come back to the good side. Uh, but as I said, I'm not necessarily surprised because Harvey still has got a bit of that grusk and grime in him. Uh, so... But ultimately, he's good. He's, he is good. I feel like we've been lacking the detective GCPD element to this show, which what which was this show's primary thing, uh, because obviously it trans transformed into so many different things when Gotham started kickstarting. They were like, "Oh, but we can do this." Oh, Bruce Wayne. Let's let's do a lot more Bruce Wayne. Even though there hasn't been any Bruce Wayne in this episode, I kind of like that. This episode or Gotham needed to take a breather from everything else they were doing. And gave us some more Harvey and Jim moments. Uh, the moments when they were going after all the cops, you know, asking the questions. They even put one of them in the trunk of the car. That totally delivered and I loved it. It was absolutely great. Like, in conclusion, guys, I thought this episode was amazing. Professor Pig was absolutely brilliant. I'm really looking... There was... I didn't talk about Professor Pig so much in this breakdown because there wasn't too much of him because it was more of an instrumental... Um, why am I using the word instrumental so much? An introduction into his character since this will be playing his character will be playing out in several episodes so don't forget guys this isn't the last of professor pig there's a lot more of him to come uh if you've seen the promo for next episode there is even more pig in that it seems like the gcpd and penguin are fighting over it's almost like street warfare because Pe professor pig is screwing up a lot of stuff so i'm i can't wait from what we saw of Michael Cerveris, I think he was brilliant, honestly. He, he, he does, I've seen a lot of people remind me that he um, reminded them of the Arkham Knight Professor Pig. And it's very true. I know what you mean. I think he was just as creepy as he could have been. They literally, It's like they brought him out of a comic book page right to live action. Uh, I, as I said, I hope we get teased with or foreshadowed of him thinking, wait, what if I can make these... Uh, people even more perfect in the eyes of what I, you know, delusionally see as perfect and try and make Dollatrons. That would be cool. But I think maybe that's a bit too early because at the minute he's just thinking in his own delusional way of how he could clean up Gotham. So we'll have to wait and see. But honestly, Professor Pig, creepy. My favorite villain of the season so far. Even 
even over Scarecrow, I'd say, I feel like Scarecrow wasn't as amazing of a payoff as it could have been. But he was still great, don't get me wrong. But Professor Pig, I feel like with what they've teased, it is like making my appetite insatiable, if that makes sense. So I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Grundy was great. Zaz was great. Penguin was great. Everything is just going well. I feel like, as I said, this was the best episode of Gotham. I can't wait to see if they keep this momentum up. Uh, momentum up. It'll be amazing. Uh, but I'm going to answer a couple of questions now before I wrap up the live stream. Uh, because that's what I do every single time. Uh, because I feel like I've said everything I've got to say about this episode. It was just, I would say, a solid like 8.5 out of 10. I never do ratings, but 10 being absolutely flawless, 8.5 being pretty damn close. So, Oh, Jalen, hello. That, that's kind of why I don't know how I feel about Ed in particular. Like Lee said, Ed has been using him this whole time and Grundy once is a true friend. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Uh, I feel kind of sorry... I just feel sorry for Grundy. He's been completely manipulated. I kind of hope that when Ed, you know, gets intelligent again, I got a feeling they might actually do this. He might actually just think, you know what, I, I kind of like you, Grundy, and I don't, I kind of feel bad if I just, you know, I don't know, kill you now or something like that. So I'm going to keep you around. I, I, it'd be cool if they actually did that. I, it'd be really cool. Do you think Penguin will have some kind of top hat or monocle this season? Um, I don't think... I thought about this a lot. Some I can't remember who asked me this recently. It could have even been you. Um, I, th I thought about the monocle, and I just thought if they had to do the bottle thing or even the monocle, that would be... I, I, I guess I would say the, the, the bottle monocle version. That would be a lot of makeup and a lot of time. I feel like that they will try and play off as a future part of Gotham that they don't have to do now. I, I don't know, I feel that's a lot of makeup. I wouldn't count on them doing it in Gotham. They could do it, that would be amazing, but imagine the makeup of just having to apply a bloody bottle eye with skin around it and then blending that in every single time. That would be quite a lot of work, so I don't know. I really don't know, but I would love to see that. I would love to see more of uh, these instrumental aspects to these villains, like... The Riddler has already got his green suit, but I think a cane would be awesome with a Riddler golden, I don't know, um, gold plated or something, question mark at the top of it. I'd love to see Penguin's mask, mask, uh, bloody monocle. But yeah, I don't know if you already talked about it, Nicoletta says, um, I lost connection, but where do you think Zaz will stand between Falcones and Penguin? And do you think Carmine has something to do with Sophia's plans? Um, I was saying earlier about Zaz, I just feel at the minute he's a plot device for Penguin. He's not so much his own individual character. I, f I didn't want too much comedy going his way, but I have to admit, it is very, very good what they're doing. But as I said, I would love to see some Zaz, Zaz development. But in terms of your question where we will stand between Falcons and Pe Penguin, I don't know. It's a very good question because obviously he has a history of being with Falcone. I think it would be bloody interesting to see him switch sides. It could be possible. You know what? I think it could even happen when Penguin might fall this season. Because Zaz technically is only might really only be loyal to those you know in power, and he and he, as we've said before, he has had a um, history um, with Falcone before, so I think that's possible. And is Falcone somewhat instrumental in Sphere's plans? I don't really think so. I feel like what they're trying to do with Falcone in the show is kind of write him out at the minute. I think this is all Sophia. She's grown up a lot different to what Mario did, I believe. Uh, so. I think this is all her being her father's daughter, if that makes sense. She really is a Falcon, and she's independent in what she's doing because she's a flipping crazy-ass Falcon. <laughs> that is everything, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode review and breakdown. Um, if you did, let me know in the comments what you thought of the episode and what you thought of this video, even. Um, my promo breakdown will be out tomorrow, Saturday, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, it should be really fun. Uh, talking about what is going on in next week's episode because it is it's looking pretty crazy it looks like some street warfare is going on and we're getting more professor pig uh which is a very good thing in my books because i feel like this is going to be the driving force of the first half of the season so keep an eye out for that everybody uh if you like this video please hit a like on it um I really appreciate that as always. Subscribe if you're brand new to this channel for more Gotham related content and DC, DC TV content in general as um, obviously the 
the better my shoulder gets, the more videos I'll be doing on Arrow and Flash and stuff as well. But apart from that, guys, thank you so much for watching today. I uh, hope you have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. See you later, guys. Take care.